What is up, investors? Happy Friday, and welcome back to In the Green with Charlie. Today, I chat with small business owner and investor user Terrell Adamson, and I can tell you it's one of the best conversations I've had yet. I'm at the bank making money, making moves, machines with tools and drills, making grooves, missions impossible. That's lots of I'm upside. Hey, Terrell, how are you doing today? I'm good this evening. How are you, my friend? I'm very good. So just to get us started, could you introduce yourself to the community? Who are you? Where do you work? Uh, where are you from? All that stuff. Cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me on this evening. Uh, so my name's Terrell. I'm originally from uh, Alabama uh, and uh, just recently moved to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, where I now currently work for uh, DeKalb County government. So pretty excited about that. I'm also a uh, small business owner. Uh, so I do some business with uh, nationwide mortgage companies uh, with my property preservation and uh, inspection. So that, that keeps me pretty busy. It's uh, seasonal. So right now we're not as busy, but, uh, you know, things happen with the market, with housing, which it might. Uh, of course, I'll be really busy on top of my full time job. Uh, and I'm also a single dad. Uh, I got a 13 year old. So uh, I'm pretty cool, excited about that. I've had him since he was six. He's 13 now and uh, kind of educating him on uh, <clears throat> all what's going on with the with the market and investing and things like that. So he can kind of build some generational wealth also when I, when I pass on and go into heaven, man. <laughs> wow. So I'm very impressed with all that stuff. You clearly have a lot on your plate, but you also have time to get in and invest. How did you first get involved with the stock market? Yeah, man. Uh, actually, you know, Charlie, I, uh, everything happened kind of last year around March, uh, you know, when, um, uh, everything kind of shut down and people were talking about, Hey, this is time to get into the market. And I was kind of, you know, standoffish, you know, I've had funds and savings account uh, for a long time now, uh, but never saw it increase. Uh, you know, so when people start talking about it, I start doing some studying and reading and getting online and um, things like that. Um, and so that's kind of how I got into it. And I went actually, I went on my app on my phone and found the invest uh, app. And I was like, well, cool, man, I can, I can gain a million dollars and play with it and, and have real time, uh, you know, stocks going up daily. And uh, just play and try to learn how it works <clears throat> and go to the forums and, you know, and see what people are saying and not really, not really say much, but just kind of read and, and just, you know, see what they're saying. So I can kind of get a grip, grip on what's going on. And uh, so around March last year, man, I went in at a small, I started uh, actually with the drive wealth that's connected to investor investor. And, um, you know, I was in that for probably three months uh, and on a small scale, you know, just trying to get my feet wet. And, um, uh, so I actually kind of got out of that and, uh, opened up a, a brokerage account with, uh, E-Trade and I'm pretty happy with that, but I still do a lot of, uh, uh, fooling around with in invest, uh, because you know, I'm still learning. Uh, so, and I'm always trying to educate myself. So, so what was like, what were you first investing in, in those March, April, May, those first few months, what was that like? Uh, more of it was dollar trades because you know, dollar stocks, you know, uh, I guess they penny stocks, I guess that's what they call it because, uh, you know, like I said, on a small scale and, and to be honest with you, Charlie, man, uh, me and my little boy, we play games a lot. So, you know, I was like, well, let's just, let's start in things that we actually, uh, take part in, you know what I mean? Like actually just crazy, you know, AMC, we like go to the movies, you know, we play, he has an Xbox. I have an Xbox, you know, we play video games or so let's do GameStop. It's cheap. You know what I mean? And, uh, things like that. And there was a couple of others that I was in and, and I saw red. And so I was like, okay, red don't look good. Let me get out, you know, because I didn't know any better. Um, so, you know, those were kind of some of the ones, uh, you know, I couldn't afford those big ones, uh, those big companies, uh, but of course still, you know, investigating them and trying to research them and maybe one day I'll be able to get in on it. So, but even, as, even today, uh, Charlie, we're, you know, I got a, I got a decent portfolio for myself and I have a custodial account for my son. He's on, he's also on invest. Uh, app and uh trying to teach him you know the ropes as well even though he's 13 i got him an account going on so he can learn what's going on uh tell you a funny story if i got time um he i got you know i told you i got out of the drive with but i left him in it so on his account and uh man he uh he ended up profiting like 300 dollars on uh on just the recent game stop now like two months ago and i said i said aiden you got a hole man just hold it just hold it just hold it and i said i'll tell you when to sell it you know and of course the commissions and whatnot and uh he went behind my back and sold it and profit three hundred dollars. So I said, "I told you to hold, man." But he was like, "I'm not greedy. I just wanted my birthday money." So uh, he's got some pocket money to play with. So that's cool. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness! So wait, walk me through. You're just someone who invests in GameStop because you think that there's a company you use because you're a gamer. 
you have no idea what's going on. When did you find out about all this chaos and walk me through what that was like? Uh, well, actually, I went in, Charlie. I, honestly, I went in in around March, April, May with GameStop, actually, to be honest with you. And it was, you know, I got in two shares, $7.89. Seven I've been on it since then. And I'm still holding my two little stinking shares that I got, you know, even though with everything that's going on now, um, I haven't bought any more. You know, I'm not really <clears throat> up to date on, you know, puts and, and calls and things like that. I do my research. I get on YouTube and watch other people and, and see how they do it. Uh, E-Trade is a little sophisticated. Uh, you know, it offers so much. Uh, so I'm still learning, learning their platform. But, um, man, it's been a crazy ride. You know, I go on the Reddit and, and read what people say. You know, I watch CNN and uh, I'm just doing a lot of just studying and researching and just trying to find out what's going on. And, you know, maybe I'll lose, maybe I'll win. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out because I'm still working and learning it, man. <laughs> That's amazing. So you mentioned you learned a lot from people on the app, both kind of through discussions and then through your own practice. What are some of the ways you've grown from last March to now? You're a year into this experience in March. How are you a better investor today than you were a year ago? Well, one thing I, one thing I do... Uh, that I've learned for myself in general. I know a lot of people probably don't talk about it, but, you know, for me in 42, you know, I didn't grow up with a lot. So my whole thing is I want to make sure I build generational wealth for my kid. You know, so, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, well, actually last year I heard a guy in a barbershop where he was talking and he, he was the guy that introduced me to the Bible of candlesticks and he sent me the book and I've been reading it, just trying to learn how to, you know, how the candlesticks work. And he said, man, you know, you know, if you're not building, you're not building a generational wealth. If, if you don't have a full-time job, you're not investing, uh, you don't have uh, real estate uh, and things like that. So those are the things that I've been taking on, you know, trying I run my own business. I have a full-time good job. I'm investing in, uh, in the stocks and uh, you know, I'm just trying to build generational wealth for myself and my family. Cause uh, you know, I don't want to leave them behind with anything. So, so I'm interested in kind of speaking of gen generational wealth, obviously is different, but you mentioned generations and you have a son who's also on this app. How are your strategies different? Just kind of being people from two different generations who grew up with different experiences. Yeah. He's a little different than me. Like he's, he's got some other different things that I'm not sure what it is. He's, <laughs> he's, he's investing in, but I'm letting him do his thing. He's got to learn, you know? So, um, you know, I let him, you know, he pick his own stocks and he has, you know, a couple of dollars where he can play around with it and just, you know, Hey, you make your own bed, brother. You know, that's how I tell him. So, <laughs> but I watch him and make sure he's doing the right thing and not going in overboard or losing, you know, you know, whether if it's, you know, 15 bucks for a 13 year old, I don't want him to lose it and then be distraught about it. Uh, so, you know, that's just kind of how I do it. Uh, but myself on his custodial account, I'm fully in control of that. Um, because, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, profits are made, you know, if we lose, we lose, if we don't, it's a risk we take. Uh, but we have, you know, we have funds in that account and we're, we're building, interest on that and that's you know residual income that's the way i look at it you know six months from now we'll get a check in the mail uh, as opposed to you know not having any money or having money in the savings account in six months you don't get anything in the mail uh, so that's kind of how we look at it so i'm curious to know speaking of six months into the future where do you think the market's going to go over the course of the next six months to year it's hard to say charlie you know um I look at it on the business side of it with my uh, business, you know, because I have uh, property preservation. So I'm always in contact with mortgage companies and they're reaching out. And, you know, right now it's really not a, you know, back in 2008 when the, when the market crashed and people were losing homes and I was really, really busy. So, you know, six months from now, you know, could, could half a million people be, you know, on the verge of losing their homes? Uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, but, you know, for me as a business owner in that in industry, I have to be prepared for it because, you know, you'll see, five houses right next to each other that has for sale signs on it. You know, the people get in over their heads, can't, they bought something they couldn't afford and now the bank is defaulting on their loans. And now, you know, it's a foreclosure or bankruptcy. And now, you know, Adamson International has to come in and maintain that property. So, you know, when I look at it, the stock, I look at it the same way, <clears throat> you know, if the, if the housing market crashed and, you know, the stocks could go up or they can go down. So you just kind of have to be prepared for it. For sure. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone? Maybe, you know, you were in this position a year ago in March where you didn't really know what to do. You are kind of new in this world. Say someone this March is kind of new in this investing, investing world. What, are so, what advice would you give them as first steps to kind of grow as an investor? I'll just say start small, you know, and you got to crawl before you walk. You know, don't, don't put all your money in because it's a risk you take. Like I said, 
Uh, I started out and just had money in the savings account. And I was like, well, darn it. I only got $2,000 in savings. And, that's, you know, six months down the road, I still got $2,000 in savings. You know, it's not moving. And I'm not, my money's not working for itself. And now, you know, I put this out. I'm investing, you know, $2,000 and six months down the road, I'm, I'm at $4,000. I doubled that and it didn't do anything, but just sit there and build wealth on its own. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would encourage people to, you know, the ones that are new starting out now, you know, start out, do your research on your own. You know, don't take advice from somebody out on the streets. Um, you know, do your research, 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 and, you know, and just make your own decision based upon, you know, what you find. And that's kind of how I did it. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I consider myself conservative, um, uh, not overly conservative, but I, you know, I like to take risks also. Uh, that's the fun part about it. So. Yeah, I know. It's always interesting like stocks in themselves are one of the most risky assets. So when people are like, oh, I'm a conservative investor, but you're investing in stocks, it's kind of a little bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> oxymoron, yeah, exactly. But I guess for the world of investing in stocks, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I have a question about kind of the dynamic between you and your, you and your son when you invest. Is there a little competition? Because you said like, oh, he's got these stocks that I don't really believe in. And you probably have some that he's like, what are you doing, dad? Is there a little competition there sometimes? <laughs> well, yeah, there is now because I still got my two stocks in GameStop. And I'm like, I come home from work and I, he's remote, you know, for school. So I come home from work and I say, man, you should have kept that stock. You should have <laughs> kept that share, man. Because look, I tell him, you know, make end of April, end of March, man, I may be, you know, wealthy. I don't know. <laughs> And you got you only got three hundred dollars, you know. So it's kind of a it's it's very competitive. Uh, but he laughs about it, and you know he gets he got what he wanted out of his three hundred. So, but he knows that he has a custodial account that Dad's taking care of for him. So how things work out. All right, thank you for that, Terrell. It was great speaking with you, and good luck on your portfolio going forward. Thanks, my friend. Thanks for having me on, man. I am not a financial advisor, and my comments should never be taken as financial advice. Investments come with risk, so always do your research and analysis before. Loud.